Welcome back. We're going to be looking at how to use uh, a quad encoder uh, for, let's say, position control. I'm just going to look at the quad encoder itself and I'm going to be using a MyRio uh, to decode it using the FPGA. Uh, this particular quad encoder is quite a good quad encoder. It's uh, 1024 bits, uh, pulses, pardon me, per uh, revolution of the shaft, whichever way you rotate it. Uh, it's got a A, a B, or an X and a Y and a Z output. The um, X and the Y outputs are standard and they give out pulses which are in quadrature to one another uh, depending uh, which direction you rotate it in. So if we look here, there's a nice web page explaining the waveforms so I don't have to draw them again. Here's, uh, in this case it's channel A and channel B. You can see that channel A is leading channel B by 90 degrees. It's going in this case, uh, well, it could be either, let's say, clockwise and in the other direction. Uh, you see that these, these are interchanged when it's going in the opposite direction. And so from the logic here, you can see 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1 and so on. We can deduce um, which direction the uh, this is going in. And uh, there are a number of ways to decode this. You can do it in software, you can do it in hardware. Uh, if you search the internet, there are many ways. Now in the old days, we used to use something like this, which is a potentiometer. Still use potentiometers, of course, but you would stick something like this, or a, a so-called servo pot, uh, on the end of a shaft of a motor, and it could rotate uh, maybe plus or minus uh, 90 degrees, and it hits an end stop. It doesn't go right round. And you connect the two ends here, that end and that end, to plus or minus some voltage. So maybe plus or minus 5 volts, plus or minus 10 volts, and you would take the output in the wiper here in the middle. So you'd be doing something like this. Plus 10, minus 10. And we'd take the output here. And that would be V out. Now that, if you set right in the middle, then you get zero volts out. And if it goes up in that direction, it goes to plus 10 and down to minus 10. The disadvantage of this is, first of all, it's got a wiper in here and a bit of friction, although you can get ones that have got much less friction. And secondly, it's limited. It's got an end stop. You can't go beyond that. Now, our one over here doesn't have an end stop. It just keeps rotating. If we look at the scope, you see the waveforms. It's an incremental encoder, so it doesn't have um, any pulses coming out. There's the two channels yellow and blue, it doesn't have any channels coming out until I rotate it. So I'm going to rotate it clockwise and you'll see there that the yellow one leads the blue one. Don't worry about the frequency or anything, that's not important. And the other way around, anti-clockwise, the blue one leads the yellow one. So there is another output, the Z output, which uh, I'm not using and that tells us how many full rotations it's done. That c could be useful, but I'm not using it. I've got a 12 volt power supply, which is an old uh, PC power supply. Got the MyRio, and I've got uh, three outputs from the MyRio, uh, which are going to be, or actually inputs to the, the MyRio, which are coming out from the quad encoder here. So that's going into A, B, from A, B and C into there, a, sorry, A and B, and the third one is the ground. That's the ground there. And these are A and B, or X and Y. And they're just simply connected to the oscilloscope. So without more ado, let's have a look at the code. And I'm using a MyRio, so here's the Project Explorer. There's nothing particularly new about this. The code here is one I just copied straight from National Instruments. So here it is, it's got a couple of three exclusive R's. How it actually works is that there's the two inputs uh, going into the FPGA and their the logic decodes it and if it's going say clockwise you get a one here which adds to 
a counter which is initially set to zero there and if it's uh, going the other direction you subtract one and that's all done here there's an add it uh, reset button and this is so that uh, we know where we're starting unlike a potentiometer where we know where zero volts is with the digital ones you don't really know where you're beginning so you have to define where you start and that really depends on the problem that you need to tell the uh, FPG or the computer that this is your reference and you're going to measure the position with respect to that reference and here's the position here now this is set up as a, if you looked at the properties of this set up as a 16-bit signed number uh, so uh, it can go negative obviously or positive if it's 16 bits it means it goes up to uh, what is it uh, 2 to the power 16 and goes positive and negative. So when I look at the um, host, I've got the host here. The host is usual sort of thing. I read from the define the target here. I've got to define the right target. This runs it. And I've got a while loop, which is timed again at uh, one megahertz. The previous loop, I should have pointed out, is timed at uh, one megahertz. I've got a clock here, the, the FPGA one. So I set that at one microsecond and that keeps that at a rock solid one megahertz sampling rate. So in the main one, I also have this case it's a timed loop. And uh, what I've done is I've divided by 32,768. It might seem a bit daft, I don't have to. Uh, that is just to normalize the position to plus or minus one just for convenience, there's no other reason for that and then I can multiply it by something to have a physical you know, position in degrees or whatever but at the moment it's just plus or minus one it doesn't got any great meaning and I've put an error in that if it goes greater than one or less than one it just puts up a error light that shows that so if we run the um, FPGA one it's been compiled before, so otherwise it would go off and compile. Go to the main one. Let's run that. It says I've changed something. Now let's take the um, quad decoder and put it in front of the camera. And I'm going to rotate it to the right clockwise, and you'll see that the the dial's going clockwise. It's beautiful movement and it's going way past 360 degrees um, there's no end stop to worry about it and if I keep going eventually it'll flip over because I've not got any protection it just shows an error and I'm just showing the principle here clearly if you're only interested in plus or minus 90 degrees and you don't want all these rotations you can do that as well otherwise you could use it as a multi-term potentiometer for something a volume control or some position control you could have a uh, this is the uh, set point of a servo and have it the, the another one on the um, on the shaft of the motor and then feedback around that through some power electronics so there we have how to use a quad encoder there's the number and there's the on the dial and now one thing I, I did mention that you is the reference so if I've put it there let's suppose I want that position to be my reference if I then press the reset button then it goes back to zero and I can start from there so the reference can be anywhere I want it to be so that's how to use a my Rio to decode a quad uh, encoder a quad detector for a rotational motor or whatever thank you very much